This episode of Soldier Knows Best is brought to you by Full Sail University. Hey, what's up guys, Soldier Knows Best. It is rumor season and rumors are starting to run rampant about all types of things, but ever since Apple has unveiled iOS 9, and I made a video going over a lot of those features that you can watch after this video, people have been asking me what's gonna be the next version of the iPhone. And in this video, I'm gonna cover some rumors and just some things that I personally wanna see in the next iPhone. And this phone's more than likely will be called the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus. And we'll probably see some performance enhancements when it comes to the processor, maybe the new A9 processor, more RAM. It's just gonna be faster. Apple's gonna be showing off all of these fancy charts showing you how you can gain better and everything's gonna be performing faster. And also these two new phones will probably look identical to the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus that are out right now. But it's gonna to get to some of those things that Apple definitely could be updating, that includes the display. Now the Retina display when it first came out was the best display on the market. But ever since then, phones like the Samsung Galaxy S6 and the G4 have really been pushing the limit when it comes to making a sharp, crisp display that just looks amazing. It's not like the, the iPhone display right now is just horrible, it's just that these displays are better. And so Apple may try to get that shine back by making a better Retina display. Now, keeping with the display, Apple could be bringing Force Touch, which is on the Apple Watch, and they could be bringing that over to the iPhone. Now, Force Touch is basically a long, hard, deep press that you do on the display to basically bring up settings or different options for software. Now, it feels like the display is sinking in because of the, the vibration effect that it gives it, but it's just a very cool sensation that you get from doing it. And if Apple was to bring that over to the iPhone, that really could clean up and clear up some screen real estate for applications because you don't need to have a lot of different buttons and settings and knobs with within your app. You can just have you just do a force touch when you need to bring up settings that you don't always see on the display. And again, it will just go away after you're done doing that. So that may end up having one or two more emails on display or being able to show a few extra things and that could be beneficial. And the last thing with the display is Sapphire Crystal, which is a very tough material that's gonna be very hard to scratch and break. Now, it was heavily rumored to be in the current versions of the iPhone, but that went away because Apple was having some production issues. Now, it doesn't seem like Apple has really worked all that out all together, so it's kinda of up in the air whether that would happen for these next generation iPhones, but definitely by the iPhone 7, I think we should see that. Now, one new thing this year that's really starting to gain traction, that is USB Type-C. Now, USB Type-C is basically reversible, so you don't have to worry about trying to plug it in the right way. And it's gonna allow for everything to be faster, faster charging, faster data transfers. And also you have the ability to be able to have your iPhone charge another phone because it's able to transfer that power over, which is pretty cool. It could eliminate the need to have battery packs or external battery packs. And so I think it'll be a win for not only Apple, but also consumers that they go ahead and adopt USB Type-C into their phones. All right, now the last thing and the most important thing to me is going to be the camera. Now, some people are saying that Apple could elect to keep the same eight megapixel camera that's already in the current phones and of course improve performance by improving the overall optics, maybe using some dual lens concept. Uh, but I think Apple may bump it up to 12 megapixels because that can only help and not hurt, uh, but also still improve the optics to make this camera really compete with other DSLR type of cameras out in the market or just dedicated cameras in general. And so definitely has some stiff competition from the S6 and the G4, but Apple has consistently made a really good camera in their iPhones for years now. And so by improving that, that definitely could help them continue to be a leader in this race for the best smartphone camera, but also adding 4K because phones have been doing 4K for at least two or three years now. Uh, so if Apple's able to add 4K and possibly add optical image stabilization to that 4K footage, I think that will be a win. And that may be something that they may elect to keep just on the iPhone 6 Plus S to kind of make it unique from this little brother, the iPhone 6S. But nonetheless, I would like to see 4K K capabilities come to at least one of the iPhones in this next update. And then the last thing with the camera that I would like to see is a manual mode. Now the manual mode on the G4 is pretty doggone nice. And if Apple decides not to continue to kind of baby us consumers along, just give us a manual mode. Some people may not use it, who cares? But a lot of people I think would love to at least have that option. And if Apple was to do that and make a, a, a drastically better camera inside of this next phone, they're definitely gonna have a winner on their hands. And so this about wraps up my video, but I do have a sponsor I wanna to talk to you about, and that is Full Sail University. Now, if you've ever been really interested in designing apps for either Android or iOS, and just getting into the software technology business and learning the, the ropes and learning how to make software, learning the business side of it. Full Sail University really has the tools that you can use either online or if you happen to be near their campus in Florida. So they have software and mobile development bachelor degree programs to help you in those individual fields. And then each student can receive a laptop at an institutional discount and other software and tools. So definitely check out Full Sail University by going to fullsail.edu forward slash soldier to get all the details and let me know what you think. 
So all right guys, this wraps up my video talking about the rumors and the next things that could be in the iPhone 6S and the 6 Plus S, but definitely stay tuned as we get closer to the announcement of this phone, which will probably happen in September and the phone will could be coming available around late September or early October. But definitely guys, like always, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Like and share it if you want to, and I will catch you later. Peace.